Hi guys, today I'm going to explain the last question on the 2024 Maths Extension to HSE. Now, the question says that there are two particles, A and B, they, and they each have mass one kilogram. They are in a medium which has a resistance, Kv, where K is greater than zero. Both A and B are I mean, have vertical trajectories. The gravity G is greater than zero, and both particles are simultaneously, which means the same time, are projected towards each other with speed V0. And the range for V0 is V0 is greater than zero and smaller than G over K. A is initially D meters directly above B, where D is smaller than G over K. The question asks us to find the time taken for the particles to meet. You see that our question says with speed V0, not velocity. Velocity means with directions already included with the question. But this says speed. So this must mean that we have to make the directions for it. So usually we will just make up to positive and down to negative. That's what we will usually do. So I'll just write it over here. Okay. Now we can see that A is initially D meters directly above B. Now with just this information, we can already draw the graph. So initially, B's displacement is just zero because it just stays here. And XA will be D. Okay, now it says we have to find the time taken for the particles to meet. So let's say the particles just meet here. Then this means that the displacement of A in the displacement of B, what will the properties be if they meet? Well, the properties will mean that the displacement of A will equal the displacement of B after a certain amount of time or after they meet. Now, this is one of our key points to solving the question. So, now we need to think, where does the displacement come from? Now, if you refresh your mind a bit, we always know that dx over dt equals v, or velocity. So this means that the derivative of displacement equals velocity. So displacement comes from the integral of velocity. Now, where does velocity come from? We know that dv over dt equals a, or acceleration. So the derivative of velocity equals acceleration. So, velocity comes from acceleration. So, the general way to, of solving this question is to first figure out the acceleration and then integrate to get velocity and then integrate again to get displacement. So now we're going to figure out the acceleration of A and the acceleration of B. Now, let's start solving the question. So, acceleration of A equals Okay, I'm going to draw the graph here again for you guys. So, the acceleration of A consists of two parts, the acceleration and the resistance. Every particle, its acceleration always has gravity. Our definition was that up is positive and down is negative. And gravity is always heading down. So then gravity will always be negative in our definition. So then the first part will be negative g as our acceleration plus I'm purposely writing plus to make you guys understand this even more so now we need the resistance since a is heading down the resistance has to be opposite so the resistance is heading up and our resistance is kv so kv has to be positive but in the question it says k is greater than zero, so the first part of the resistance is positive, but then V, VA, 
is negative, but it has to be positive because it's going up. So then what do we do? We add a negative to make it positive. Easy. Plus negative K V A. Okay? Now we will do it for B. The acceleration part is always negative G, like I've said before. Negative G plus. Now we basically just do the same thing with that. So we see since B is heading up, the resistance has to be heading down, so then KV has to be negative. But in the question, K is greater than zero, and VB is also greater than zero, but it needs to be negative. So we do the same thing, we also put a negative in front to make it negative. So it's plus negative KVB. For the rest of this question, I'll just be focusing on A, because B uses a similar method to solve as well as A, so this halves the time of explaining. Now we will actually start solving the question. Okay, now I'm gonna get rid of this plus into a normal plus sign. So, so we have to integrate, but we can't just integrate now because we don't know what respect it's with. So then, as we know before, acceleration equals dv over dt. So we change this into that. So dva over dt equals just minus one. So as you can tell, this is a differential equation, and now we will separate the variables. So we will multiply the dt onto the right hand side and divide g plus kva onto the left hand side. So dva equals negative. G plus K V A and T. It becomes G plus K V A. One over G plus K V A and then D V A. Take D T. Now we can integrate both sides. The integral of G plus K V A equals to T. Okay? Now, this left hand side integral is a simple integral, so I think you guys can figure this out on your own, but I'll just tell you the answer right here. It's equal to one over K times one after that G plus K V A. Now, you guys might be wondering why I didn't write plus c. Because I'm going to write the plus c on the right hand side. This is also a very simple integral. So it's just negative t and then plus c1. I'm writing c1 because later in the question we'll have more constants and it will just like be a mess. We don't know if g plus kva is positive or not. That's why I was writing absolute value. But there was this information in the question where it said v0 is smaller than g over k. Okay? Now, we can use this to maybe prove that this is always positive. Okay? So, I will multiply a negative 1 on both sides. So, negative v0 is equal to negative g over k. Now, we will multiply the k to that side. And k is greater than zero, so we don't need to worry about swapping the sign again. So negative k v zero is equal to negative g. Negative v zero equals v a. So then we can just change this negative v zero into v a. So k v a equals negative g. I mean, it's greater than negative g. And then if we move this negative g to the left hand side, then we will reprove it. G plus k v a equals zero. Yay! So now we don't need the absolute value. Okay. okay, we won't just integrate right now because we need to figure out the VA. So then our step one is to multiply the K to that side. So 1 of G plus K V A equals 2. And then plus. K is a constant and C1 is a constant. So that makes another constant. So it's C2. Now, to get rid of the lawn, we just have to put E to the power of all of this. So g plus k v a equals to e to the power of negative k t plus c2. e to the power of a sum is just e to the power of the individual ones multiplied together. So this right hand side is just e to the negative k t times e to the power c2. e is a constant, c2 is a constant, so that makes another constant. So c3. So the right hand side is actually just c3, e to the negative k t. We need to figure out the constant. Because we can't just integrate right now, we don't know what the constant is. So we have to 
um, plug in initial values. So our initial value is when t equals 0. When t equals 0, the a equals negative 0. And then now we can just substitute all of this in. So this g to the same because it has nothing to do with this. This k can also be the same, but this a is negative 0. So times negative 0. And then the right hand side is c3. And then look, this power is 0, and then e to the power 0 is 1. So the right hand side is c3. So now we know our constant. But I'll just rewrite this a bit. Now we can just substitute in the c3 into the right hand side. So g plus k of the a equals c3 equals g minus k of the 0. So we substitute that in. We need to figure out VA to then integrate again to get displacement. Now, our first step is to just move the G to the other side, which is easy. Now, I'll put the negative G at the front. Now, we will just divide the K to get to VA. Let's look at this one. If we do some partial fractions with this, we can see that the first term is g over k, obviously, but then the second term, the two k's cancel out, so it's just v0. So then we can write it. We can change the va into dxa over dt. I will rewrite the equation up here. This is not a differential equation anymore. So we could just multiply the dt to the right-hand side and then just integrate. We can integrate both sides again to get this placement. Okay, I just won't write the integral sign because um, it will take a lot of time to rewrite this again. Because integral of this, this is with respect to t. So this has nothing to do with t, so this is a constant. The integral constant is multiplied by the variable. So the first part is just negative g over k times t. Okay, now this part is the part we're actually integrating. So this part is actually a constant, so we can put it down. And then the integral of this with respect to t is also a very simple integral, so then I'll get back to the integral on the bottom, so then I'll just write answer. Okay, now I'm pretty sure it's plus c3, so I'm going to write c3. Now I'm going to organize this. So this is equal to negative g over t. Now this is a negative, so we just bring the negative over here, and I'm just going to bring this over here again. And just like this. Now we can substitute in initial values again to figure out the c3. So, our initial value is still when t equals 0, xa equals, now, um, if you recall from before, xa initially is d. So then, we can just substitute all of this in. The left hand side, which is d. Okay, this is something multiplied by t. Anything multiplied by 0 is 0, so this is 0, right? Now, now it's negative. This is like this. When t equals 0, like I said before, e to the power of 0 is 1. So, 1 times this is just this. So, we keep this, but then we get, we get rid of the d. But then this, there's nothing to do with that, so we copy that down. d plus c3. To figure out c3, it's easy. We just move that to the left hand side. So, what do I want here? c3 equals 2. d plus now we have figured out C3, so we can plug in C3 again. This is what XA is, and similarly, this is what XB is. So, as we can see, our equation was XA is equal to XB. So, we are going to set these two to be equal. Now, I won't write this thing equals blah, 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 blah. I'll just do it like this. The first thing that you guys can notice is, you see, these two terms are the same. Now, what does that mean? You can just cancel them out. So, if you guys cancel all of these terms out, then we will get... Now, you guys can check you're working out with this and see if they match. If they don't match, then, well, maybe you can check. On the left-hand side, we have v0 over k times e to the power of negative kt. On the right-hand side, we have basically the same thing, but a negative. So, we can just move this, and it'll become two of them. So, I just put two of right here. And then, I will move these terms to the, to the right-hand side. Now, this and this is the same thing as this and this, so that's also two of them. Okay, now we are so close to solving the question. Now, we can just um, divide this, because we see these two terms are exactly the same, so then we can just divide it. 1. Okay, so this is d times k over 2v0. So on top, it's just dk. Okay, and on the bottom, it's just 2v0. 
Okay, so we can just take a lawn on both sides to get this. Now we can just divide the negative k to that side or just multiply negative 1 over k. So the time was negative 1 over k. Okay. Now this is the final answer of the 2024 Maths Extension 2, the last question.